Last year I posted a video in which I explained to you why I prefer using the Micro Four Thirds system above APS-C or even full frame. And I gave a couple of reasons why I prefer them. And that's only my preference. And I wasn't suggesting at all that Micro Four Thirds is better than APS-C or full frame. I, just, I was just telling you why I prefer to use it. A couple of the reasons were the price and the size. And in that video, I also suggested or you know, mentioned there's a couple of perceptions about Micro Four Thirds that might put people off. But the other perception that I suggested people have is the fact that you don't get quite the same quality of depth of field you would do for Micro Four Thirds or full frame. And that's what people think. But I didn't say that's the case, but that's what people think. And in this video, I really would like to give that a test and try to test the differences between the APS-C camera and my Micro Four Thirds camera to see if I can spot any difference in depth of field, shallow depth of field, or, or, or etc. And hopefully I can show you that, the, that there isn't any difference or there is a difference and I'm not really sure because I've not done this test before but hopefully we can go through this together and you and I can make this decision this comparison between us I'm here at the Arboretum one of my favourite places in Lincoln and it's got these really nice railings and I think I could use these railings to give a good demonstration of depth of field because I expect the railings to be in and out of focus depends on uh, the depth of field I'm going for and what I'm going to do, I've got a piece of chalk that just happens to be green and I've got a chalker at one of the railings, one of the tops of the railings to give me my focal point so we know which railing I've focused on and I'm going to try and take two different pictures, one with the Nikon and one with the Olympus and we can have a look at them. So I'm going to chalk up uh, this railing here, it's got a green bit of chalk on there now and we can see exactly what that looks like and try to make that comparison. So as an example, the Olympus has a 17mm lens on and I've got to give it the equivalent crop factor which is 1.5 of the Nikon and I chose to use the Nikon because it's 1.5 as opposed to my Canon which is 1.6. So this 17mm lens I've got to give it a, a 1.5 crop factor which makes this 25mm. So that's what I've got to do, take an equal picture, one with the 17mm and one with the 25mm. In addition, to get the equivalence right, I also have to multiply the f-stop, the aperture, by 1.5. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the same and you would definitely get a shallower depth of field with the Nikon than you would with this and it wouldn't be a, a, a fair comparison. So my first shot I've gone aperture priority f4.2 because that's f2.8 equivalent micro four thirds. It's giving me one fifth of a second and it, I'm s focusing right in the middle of the picture on, on this green chalk mark on this railing. It's got ISO 100, I've gone for the two second timer and let's give this a try now. There it goes. And there's our first shot, there you can see the first shot, that's it. And we can see there's a bit of blur in the background little bit of blur in the foreground but that uh, piece of chalk looks fairly all right so now I'm going to switch cameras and I'm going to put the uh, Olympus on and the 17mm lens so here we go now I've got the Olympus EM1 Mark II with a 17mm lens on and I've gone for exactly f2.8 which is f4.2 equivalent in Nikon APS-C it doesn't tell me what shutter speed it's giving me but it's aperture priority and as you can see if I'm looking in there I can see this here I'm focusing I would be focusing dead on that uh, on, on the bit of chalk mark I've, I've, I've put on there so we should be alright in fact I do need to put this into uh, two second timer mode so let's just do that now I'll put that on two second timer and that's it there, so, um, so I'll take that off. That's how nice and easy Micro Four Thirds is. You can just go into the, the super panel, which is brilliant. So I'll pretty much focus it in the middle, just get that right. And there, it's focused right on the dot. So I'm gonna press that button now, two second timer, and there's our shot.
that's the two images taken and what I can now do is go home have a look at the two images on my computer to see if there's any differences in the depth of field if any either one of them's got a shallower or a deeper depth of field and we can have a look together I hope and suspect that they should be identical but the proof of the pudding is in the eating so we will have a look and see for ourselves which one is better what I might also do while I'm here at the Arboretum is do a couple more shots where I've got different uh, images and different depth, uh, different apertures, etc. This is a nice shot of the fountain behind me. I've got the Olympus set up exactly the same as the railings, f2.8, aperture priority, two second timer. So I'm going to give this a shot now and then I'm going to switch cameras and put the Nikon on and exactly the same as before. This isn't really going to give us a, a depth of field, proper depth of field test, but I just like this picture, so I'm just going to take it. And there it is. So here, here we have the Nikon, exactly the same setup, f4.2, 25 mil, and the aperture priority, two second timer, exactly the same as uh, the, the Olympus, or the equivalent, I should say. Uh, and let's take this shot now and then when the, we've taken this shot I can show you them both when I get back home we can have a look at those together like the other ones so. two second timer and there's the image and you might be able to see that on the back of camera And by the power of YouTube, I'm able to get home and upload the two images on my computer and do a small edit on eat both of them. And it is only two images. I took one image of the railings, one on each camera, and one image of the fountain, one on each camera. So let's jump on my computer, and have a look at those two images now. So here we are on the computer, and I've got the first two images side by side. This one on the left is the Nikon, and this one on the right is Olympus. And I've just done a very small crop to make sure that they are uh, equivalent, they're the same. There's, there wasn't much in it anyway. And immediately, without doing anything else, you can see that the depth of field looks identical. So if we look there, going back through the Nikon, it starts to get blurry and blurry and blurry, more blurry, exactly the same on the Olympus. It looks ex identical to me, it looks, the blur is identical. And at the front of the image, the, the blur at the beginning of the the image uh, in the foreground blurry exactly the same there doesn't look to be any difference whatsoever and we can also zoom on this tree in the background and you can see it's completely out of focus and that's completely out of focus and they look identical they just look completely identical those two images they're amazing really that they're that identical and uh, one thing I will point out though and I'm not sure what happened but I plan to focus on the chalk line. Unfortunately, my Olympus focus was slightly out and it actually focused on this spell rather than this one, which is a bit weird, it's a bit odd. But still, they, they're just, in my book, they are identical. The, the, the depth of field, the background blur, the foreground blur, the focus is identical. Uh, it, amazing. So that's the first image. So uh, let's have a look at the fountain. So I'll put the Nikon fountain there and the Olympus fountain there. So you can see, that once again, these almost look like they're the same image, don't they? They look like that completely identical. So what we can do, just to be 100% sure, it's a bit difficult, I suppose, trying to compare the, the depth of field further away because you'd expect that um, you'd, you'd get a wider depth of field anyway. Um, so let's have a look here. Uh, there's a, a water bottle or a plastic bottle in the in the bottom of the fountain and they look pretty identical to me so uh, i did notice something really interesting in the olympus image there's a, a bit of an artifact there that actually it, that could be by the shape of it at, at somebody's leg so perhaps when i took the image and because it was on a one fifth of a shutter speed or something it actually um it caught the legs of somebody either walking in or out of shot which is a bit weird or well, hopefully it's not a ghost but uh, once again, those two images are identical. And to me, I know it wasn't a 
a very scientific test. And it was just me taking a couple of photos. But I think I've proved in these two photos that the depth of field between a micro four thirds and an APS-C, given the equivalence, given the equivalence is the same, then uh, you will get exactly the same results. So as long as you take in consideration the crop factor, on this, in this case for the Nikon 1.5, and multiply that 1.5 crop factor for micro four thirds, you will get exactly the same image. And I think it's exactly the same on full frame. If you multiply the full frame crop factor by two and you ensure you can keep the equivalent, you will get the same result. One other thing to highlight, one thing that I discovered, I learned in my research for this video, and one thing I got wrong in the past, I put my hand up, I'd admit that I was wrong, that there's equally no difference whatsoever in low light performance between uh, a micro four third sensor and a full frame sensor. Uh, I know things like photo sites and, and den density of the sensor does kind of play a, its part. But if you consider the crop factor, you will get an equivalent ISO, an equivalent low light performance to micro four thirds or APS-C or full freight. So in this instance, the crop factor has to be taken into consideration. So you square the crop factor. So for uh, the Olympus uh, ISO 200, you square that and it becomes 450 for APS-C and 800 for full frame. And if you take your image at ISO 200 with an equivalent uh, focal length and aperture and ISO and compare that to a full frame camera with the correct equivalence, you will get an identical image. That's, that's it. That's physics. That's science. It's indisputable. Uh, it, but it's something that many of us uh, are not aware of and there's this perception that micro four thirds isn't as good as these other um, center sizes now having said all of that i might sort of disappoint uh, the micro four thirds community a little bit because if i want to go out and take a picture and get a super soft background and get a really light picture and a nice image it would be easier for me to do that with a full frame camera bear in mind that my f1.4 lens on my full frame camera even though um yeah i would be able to do an equivalent shot with my micro four thirds it, it won't be able to compete with that full frame camera uh, uh that's that that's just it it's scientifically it can it be technically it will compete it will be no different but if i'm doing it as a you know in the real world it would be easier and better for me to use that full frame camera that's just that's just it i know that's gonna probably upset a few people or people are going to disagree with me but i'm not saying it's any different technically it's just the the, the feel for when you've got the camera in your hand thank you very much indeed for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you've found it interesting and informative and if you have why not give it a like and if you do like this photography content i'm trying to create then why not join along and subscribe to the channel it's completely free and all you've got to do is click the button and that would be fantastic. Once again, thank you very much indeed for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.